What's hot, what's hip, what's happening, what's shaking on your hump day? We as always here at the Tom Gully Show hope you get the full, total, and complete amount of look at all these headphones today. Amount of hump that you feel you got coming your way there, Chief. That's what we hope you get. Hey, today I'm gonna tell you, let me tell you, about bubble gum. It has a vast and rich history and uh, scientific properties that you may not be aware of, but you will after this show. Mm -hmm. I think there's a Rico at eight, so, you know. Oh, let's see. I thought this was funny. Bazooka never fell from under my desk. And, oh, sorry. Like, subscribe, uh share follow all those free things they're so free they they don't cost you nothing they mean the world to us here at the show um and then also you know we are monetized so read all that stuff in the crawl and if you want to do it do it but if you don't you don't have to you can just come in here and we're monetized now so ching ching super chat uh and then also we have our merchandise store and that's mugs somebody bought that are now the centerpiece of what looks like a quality breakfast nook. Which is the only kind of nook I think people really talk about anymore, right? At any rate, you can find that at the TomGullyShow.com or CafePress.com slash The Tom Gully Show. There you go. The doctor says, lucky in love. Sounds like me when I met my baby girl. You, sir. Are very, very lucky, man. Guess what day it is, says Doc Torn. Is it your anniversary? I don't know. 
Lori Dancer, hey! The inspiration behind Lori's Just Dance a Few on Metal Maiden Vicky's Metal Euphoria with our good, good friends. Hold on, wait for it. Our good, good friends. Our friends we can never forget over at Wait For It. Oh, there it is. Sil Sonic Asylum Radio. They're the most awesome people in the world. And Lori's awesome and glad to see her. And there we go. So, sonicasylumradio.com. Check it out. Check out Metal Maiden Vicky's Metal Euphoria. And you'll get to take part in Lori's Just Dance of You. There you go. Lori Dancer says, Hi, Tom. Finally, our harmonic conversions of me, Mr. Gully, and 7 p.m. Eastern. Well, when the stars align, you know, it's the, the eclipse just a couple days ago and now. Let's see here. Good evening, all. Good evening, Lyndon. Cheerfulest chat room on the internet. Lepeg Lake Vets said, when will you be able to have memberships? Well, interesting that you asked that. Um, I, I don't think memberships are necessary here at the moment because I don't produce any members-only content, and we just got monetized, so I don't know. If there's a benefit to to it to folks, then I'd, I'll do it in a heartbeat. But I thought it would be better for you, the home viewer, if uh, there were there weren't memberships because then that's not a reoccurring fee and all that. Blah, blah, blah. Um, but in the event that I do start, I was thinking about doing some movie reactions and some things like that, uh, or something that would be more exclusive. <laughs> you could watch me watch an Arsenal match. Ooh. That would definitely be censored. Um, something. I'm, I'm trying to think of something that would make it worthwhile to members. Um, I'm investigating even whether there can be a full-time discount on Cafe Press for all the stuff. I, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't even have a Discord. Uh, but it's a good question and one that deserves an answer, and there's the answer. Um, Ronald Bateman, you generous man, you. He says, thank you, Mr. Gully. Sorry I didn't win the Powerball so we could recreate Bushmills tonight. <laughs> yeah, me and you both. I'd have bought that place and <laughs> furnished it with the exact same stuff. I don't think I have any of that stuff anymore. None of it. Uh, the doctor says, Tom, long you long time if you buy the MERS. Tom, love you long time if you buy the MERS. Yeah, that's very true. That's very true. Uh, Dino Bryan says, I did try watching Rico, but it's a guy's channel, not for me. Well, it is pretty guys-ish. Uh, Peg Leg Vet says, understood. Thank you. But it's a great question, and I'd like to do it, but I don't feel like I'm offering anything that makes that worthwhile for you. So when when I do, man, we will do it. Uh Randy says, chef and crew in the house, down there in Union Station, making up them fine pizzas. They make them gourmet pizzas there, where he works. Lori Dancer says, how nice of you to remember. I've been enjoying your show in the off hours. Always nice to participate live in this very cheerful chat room. Well, Lori, it's always nicer to have you here in the chat room. Um, the chat room over at Sonic Asylum uh, Radio and they allow me to put their show, my shows, on their Facebook page. Uh, but but a lot of their shows you can get streaming on the website there. And their chat room allows GIFs and all sorts of other crazy stuff. And it's a blast. It is a blast over there. Just, it's a blast. Among the blasts I have known, it is one of them. Oops, already did that one. Already did that one. Already did that one. Uh, chef on deck. Yeah, we have the chef here. Ronald Bateman says, uh, how big of crew are you running, chef? I think he's got, what, three guys? Two guys? Um, SG Fanboy says, chewing bubble yum cotton candy like a four-year-old as we speak. Man, when bubble yum came out, it was all the rage. There were kids at my school selling bubble yum for like a quarter a piece. And I think you can get the whole package for a quarter back then. I'm not sure. Maybe it's 50 cents. I don't know. 
Lori Dancer says, we do have some fun. They do. If you've never seen, if you like heavy metal and you've never seen Metal Made and Vicky's Metal Euphoria, you're missing out. And really all the shows on Sonic Asylum. If you're a metal fan, you get to hear some really new, really independent, really hot stuff. It's a good channel. Nicest people I've ever met, too. They're much nicer than you guys. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, sometimes I make the funny jokes because I have to amuse myself. Uh, let's see here. Let's just talk about some bubble gum. How about? But first, of course, I've got to open my thing. And I think you all know how painful that can be. Let me get a picture up for you folks. What would be a good picture to have up first? Well, this would probably be the one that I chose. Um, oh, Toby McGroby, I've got some things to say about one of your comments. I'll get to that shortly. I'll settle your hash shortly. No, I'm not I'm joking. Okay, so let me tell you about bubblegum. Now, First thing was we have to distinguish between gum that was specifically created for the purpose of bubbling and other gums that throughout the years might have provided the tensile strength and other scientific characteristics to create bubbles. We clear there? This is all just about gum that was meant to be bubbly. All right. So in what we might call mo in the era of modern chewing gum, if natural rubber, such as something called chickle, uh, which chicklets were pieces of chickle, which it is a natural gum or rubber. It, it comes from a tree and it is a rubber. It's a gum. It's, it's just something that you can continually chew. If it comes from that, it must pass several purity and cleanliness tests. Now, most modern types of chewing gum, including bubble gum, use synthetic gum-based materials. That's why when you read the package of any gum, it's sorghum, wheat, mana, fatum, and, and, and stuff. That's a synthetic man-made gum. These new materials, synthetics, give you a longer lasting flavor, a more a softer, more palatable texture, and a reduction in tackiness. They're not nearly as sticky. Do you remember the old days when you got chewing gum in something? It was a week getting out. Now it just kind of, oh, just take another, it's like a kneaded eraser. I just take the gum and put it on the thing. And anyway, so the sort of chewing gum, you know, consisting of what they call long chain polysaccharides, Bubble gum can typically exhibit linear and nonlinear viscoelastic behaviors. That means on a line or not on a line. It stretches. Therefore, the distinct deformations under the chewing gum can be affected. And you can tell some food scientist has gone to work on this for Flea or Tops or whoever makes bubble gum. The gum can be affected by shear rate. Shear rate. It's the rate at which a progressive shear strain is applied to chewing. Shear strain, that's the amount of shear that something can withstand without being perforated. And shear stress, that's the amount of pressure that the material can be applied through, of course, the teeth. Now, Based on these three characteristics, it's helpful to think of chewing gums as a material rather than something that you enjoy or whatever. Um, I could get into some real heavy duty science here and, you know, yield strains and plastic deformation and strain hardening, viscosity, strain rate. Let's not go through all that, okay? Let's not go through all that. Just know 
that bubble gum is made the way it's made with a lot of attention to a lot of science to make it happen. And that's how those polymers and synthetic gums are created. There you go. You'd probably rather know about the history. The history, right? Well, it should not surprise you to know that the inventor a bubble gum was a German and in 1928 Walter Dimer an accountant for the Fleer Chewing Gum Company in Philadelphia was experimenting with new gum recipes you know like you do and one recipe that he had was a formula for chewing gum that he called Blippa Blubba, because of course he was German. <laughs> what else would, and I think I will call this Blippa Blubba. And he found that to be less sticky than regular chewing gum, and it stretched way easier. Now, this Blippa Blubba was enthusiastically embraced by the folks at Fleer, and it was eventually named by the president of the Fleer Chewing Gum Company as Double Bubble because of its stretchy texture. Now, this is the first commercially produced bubble gum in the United States, 1928. And this was the dominant brand of bubble gum. Okay, for a long time. I will show you what the double bubble looks like. Mm -hmm. Yes, I will. That is the super bubble. Oh, did I not do double bubble? I didn't do double. Maybe I did do double bubble, but it's on the... Hold on, hold on. We're not out of the woods here yet, kids. I may be able to show you double. But I'm sure you guys have all seen double bubble. I mean, you, you've been around. Oh, here we go. I do have double bubble. Um, I'll do that real quick. Let me see. I'll make it my background is what I'll do. There it is. All right, here we go. I'll just go ahead and make it my background real fast. Because as you know, StreamYard doesn't just let me put a JPEG on the screen willy-nilly. <laughs> that would be crazy. And let me make it to my background. I love it when it is the background. I'll just add a background. I'll just add one. This is this the double bubble? Let me see here. Quick look. This is probably a lot of extra effort to take just to show you guys what double bubble looks like. There we go. Oh, poop. <laughs> I just closed that window. I feel so stupid. <laughs> just close the window. Anyway, how you guys doing? I hope you're having a good time. Everybody's rocking in the free world. And but I am gonna now it now it's now it's a quest. I'm gonna show you the double bubble. That's the only thing that can happen now. All right, there we go. Save background. There, good idiot that hosts the show. All right, all right. There we go. Ooh, hey, it makes me look pretty funny, doesn't it? All right, there you go. There's double bubble. Oh. You guys can see it. Amer Look, it says America's original. It says America's original on it and everything. I'm going back to the other one. This one makes me feel silly. All right, so where was I? Oh, I believe I was over here with my thing. So Double Bubble was the most dominant brand of bubble gum in the United States from 1928 until after World War II. And that's when the, if this was a British, if this was a BBC doc, history documentary, this is where I would say, and that's when the unthinkable happened. Uh, <laughs> that's when the game changer came out. Bazooka, bazooka bubblegum took the stage. Oh boy. And they entered the market. And until the 70s, Bubblegum still tended to stick to one's face as the bubble popped. You, and, and I can attest to this. You'd have used bubble, it would pop, and if it touched something, it was going to stick to it. 
And that time, well, that's when synthetic bubble gum was introduced, which would almost never, ever stick. And bubble yum was one of the biggies for that. Bubble, bubble, bubble yum changed the whole thing because Bazooka Joe was a hard puck of, of gum that you had to masticate. You had to chew that thing for a while to get it to be soft and wonderful. But not gums like... Oh, wait a minute. Do I have to show you another background? I think I have to show you another background. Man. I think I have to make another background here. Well, I'll put this one up for a second because this is one of them. Bubblicious. Bubblicious was kind of a knockoff. It didn't. It, Bubblicious did not have the uh, graininess of. It didn't have the same texture as Bubble Yum. But uh, all right, let me add another one here. Let me take another flyer. There we go. Let's see what this is. Could it be Bubble Yum? Yes, as a matter of fact, it is. None other. Come on, then bubble yum. Delicious bubble yum. Let's take bubble issues over here. Bubble yum. Yeah, we always we all remember bubble yum. That's the original. Not as good of a background though as my other one, so I'm taking it off the screen. But but you remember bubble yum. Sure. It lives on to this day. It really does. So anyway, uh bubble gum got its pink color, huh? Bet you didn't know how it got its pink color. Because the original recipe that Volta Daima worked on was like a dingy gray. It did not look very appetizing. So he added red dye that was diluted to pink for the very, very, very specific reason that it was the only food dye that he had at the time. So, what flavors, I hear you cry out, what flavors do bubblegum chewers, who are mostly children, what do they prefer? Children tend to prefer strawberry and blue raspberry flavors, and they don't like super complex flavors. They like a really strong one flavor. So, while there is a flavor, okay, there's a flavor that happens when you make bubble gum, okay? It, it, it comes with its own natural flavor, right? Uh, natural bubble gum flavoring can be produced with a combination of banana, pineapple, cinnamon, cloves, and wintergreen, all right? But... Most places add flavor, like some things we'll get to here in a minute. The largest ever bubblegum bubble ever blown. What do you think it is? 26 inches in diameter, over two feet in diameter. Now, the largest hand, hands-free, that's bubble gum where they take and they do things to it as they're blowing it. The largest hands-free bubble gum bubble is 20 inches. And that's uh, been around since 2004. The other, the other person who broke it was a woman and she did it in 1996. Let me just go ahead here and start getting into some subjects here with some of these pictures because I showed you about this. Now, this is the, 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 the top five. Let me just go through the top five bubble gums um, real fast here. I think it is. Uh, which bubble was the best? Talk on it. Number one, let's go from number five. Number five is a gum, well, I'll just show it to you right now. And, and a lot of people tend to overlook this gum when they talk about bubble gum. And I, I think that's a mistake. Right there it is, Big League Chew. 
That's number five on the list. And Big League Chew is really good. The only weird thing about Big League Chew is you just don't know how much you have. You know, I mean, it's in that package. It's all, yeah, right. Okay, whatever. Um, number four is Bubblicious. I showed you that. Number three is Hubba Bubba. I showed you that. Number two, Bazooka. And number one is Double Bubble, the original, the old school kind. Now, here's one that, that doesn't get mentioned a lot either. And that is Super Bubble. And I remember Super Bubble very well. I tragically learned that Super Bubble has been discontinued and it's compa another gum with it was discontinued at the same time. You guys remember Fruit Stripe gum? Fruit Stripe gum, they're not making it anymore. Just this year, it was discontinued. How can you discontinue Fruit Stripe gum? If you're, if you're not making it or selling it, that's a failure of your marketing. That's not, because Fruit Stripe gum is the bomb. I mean, it is the bomb. Okay, now here is another one that I think has gotten lost in the shuffle. I don't know if they make it anymore. I haven't seen it in a long time. They probably have it at those nostalgic candy shops that they have in the airports and places now. But, and that is, and this, just by the way, this was my go-to favorite number one choice bubble gum until bubble yum came along but even then it was 50 50 rotation it really was and that would be bub's daddy bub's daddy was a rope of bubble gum and what i like about this is it even has on this it came in a zillion flavors this this says fruit red hot hated the red hot never get the red hot um, cherry, apple, and grape. The, the, the fruit was amazing. The apple was really tangy. You couldn't do that, a lot of that, but it was good. The cherry, also pretty good. But the grape, oh, mama. Oh, mama. That was some good stuff there. That was some good stuff. So... Anyway, throw any of yours out there that um, didn't make the list or I didn't get a picture of or whatever. Because there's a lot of them out there. You know those bubblegum cigars? You know? Remember those? Bubblegum cigars? Anyway. Let's see. Where did I leave off at? Here. I know I left off here. I love dual flavored bubble tape from the 90s and anything really sour. Now, I did run into the bubble gum tape, but it, it was after my time. It just, I was way out, and I also couldn't see myself carrying around the tape. Sorry. But I understand a lot of people really love the bubble tape gum tape. Sorry, getting ahead of myself. No, you're right on time. It was perfect. Lori Dancer says, I have a Fleer's double bubble square of gum, still unwrapped and unchewed. I expect you'd break a tooth on it if you tried to bite it. Now, maybe, maybe not. And even if it did shatter, I bet you if you kept chewing on those shards, it would eventually form a gelatinous, you know, it would be gum eventually. If you, if you chewed on it long enough, it'd be gum. Remember you used to go to the bank and if, if you know, you're really good in the car. Sometimes the lady at the bank would pitch your mom a couple double bubbles, you know, out of a little pail or something she had. I remember that. I heard Dub Hubba Bubba had spider's eggs in it. That was a rumor about a lot of, especially uh, bubble yum, because it was so chewy. Bubble gum, when you, bubble yum, when you got it, it was soft. And we never had that before. So everybody said spider eggs were in it to make it stretch and all that. Laurie Danzer says, I remember that Joker fish. Yeah, a lot of them. 
Uh, ouch. You sound like a chemical engineer, Tom. I felt like one reading into all that stuff. Uh, Volta Dietma, though, he was a uh, dima. He was very much into it. SG Fanboy says, no, let's do get into it. Yes, let's do get into it. No, man, it's so boring. It's so, so boring to us, to a Walter Dima. I'm sure it was fascinating. Let's see here. Um, nervous. SG Fanboy says, tell me about the molecular orientation, Tom. <laughs> Uh, structurally, polymers of this nature tend to have what we call a light covalent bond. Now, what that means is, <laughs> I'm making it up. Um, Aku says, yo, sorry I'm early. It's, it's not a party till you get here, Aku. Uh, I was a bit scared that you had fallen. Oh, by the way, uh, like, share, subscribe retweet, do all those free things and spread the show around. Why should you be the only one that's suffering? And um, we'd appreciate that. And we're also monetized. So, you know, <laughs> I know that's, I got it like that. Uh, baseball cards gum was the worst. It really was the, the gum that was in tops and Fleer. Now that was gum that when you bit it, it shattered. It, it was just a stick of, I always, I always felt like it would be better if I just chewed on the cards, uh, frankly. Let's see, folks saying hi to each other. It's a miniature sculpture at this point, Toby McCroby. Double Bubble and Hubba Bubba used to have uh, t-shirts that girls would wear. The Doc Torn says, last time I saw Double Bubble was when I looked at my fiance. Hey now, whoa, but um psh. Here all week. Tip your drinks and enjoy your waitresses. Lori Dancer says, I heard spiders start to take down their webs during eclipses. Maybe they had double hubba bubba sales day on Monday. These spiders palm their face. <laughs> it does. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'll check into that eclipse thing. I think I would have heard about I did a lot of eclipse research on animals, and I never heard that. But that, that doesn't mean it isn't true. I'll check it out. Toby, by, by the way, a lot of spiders take their webs down every night. So the two main reactions animals have to the eclipse is that 75% of them begin to perform nocturnal activities. In other words, the eclipse makes them think it's becoming nighttime and fakes them out. And then the second is about 25% of them, and that's uh, anxiety, distress, because they realize that it's not time to be night and or it's getting dark way too fast. So it distresses them, freaks them out. Uh, Lori, let's leave it the way it is. Uh, Joker says, I had a wild time. We had a big black dog and four pit bulls. It was a super Bargain King extravaganza. Oh, man, that's awful. That's awful. Joseph Ard says, Bazooka Joe. Yeah, Bazooka Joe was a game changer. It was, uh, and then this was the reason why, the Bazooka Joe comics. The worst comics and jokes and riddles and puzzles in the world, but we loved them anyway. And at one point, they modernized Bazooka Joe because it looked like a 1930s comic for way too long. And then they made it more modern. I don't know that the comics are still inside them. Let's uh, just, well, we just ask Google. Would you, are comics still inside Bazooka Joe gum? Oops, gum, gum, gum. They axed the comics as part of a brand refresh in 2013. Apparently agreeing that, yes, maybe Bazooka Joe wasn't as hip as he used to be. And this is in 2019, but, it, but the headlines end, Bazooka Joe comics will return to classic book. Okay, so they, they remarketed it in 2019 as part of a Bazooka throwback pack 
which contains six pieces of gum in a box inspired by the brands at Rinnage and Iconic Packaging, uh, wrapped in classic comics. So I guess they're just using it here and there. I don't know. The main character, yeah, I know. Why did he lose his eye? I, I don't, I'm embarrassed to say I don't know the Bazooka Joe backstory. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I was busy um, <laughs> a lot during my life. Uh, let's see here. Bazooka Joe history. Let's see. The gum was most likely named after a rocket-propelled weapon used by the Army during World War II, which itself was named after a musical instrument. Um, the character Bazooka Joe. Okay, let me get into it. Got a black eye patch. One of the most recognizable American advertising characters of the 20th century due to worldwide distribution. Sometime between 1952 and 1954, Woody Gelman and Ben Solomon, heads of product development at Topps, approached cartoonist Wesley Morse to create Bazooka Joe and his gang. The character was named after a contest that was held asking for suggestions. Gelman, along with his friend and former co-animator Ben Solomon, created Popsicle Pete, who had appeared in ads for packages of Popsicle Ice Pops for decades. And Popsicle Pete caught the eye of the president of the Topps company, Arthur Shoren. So he hired those two guys, and uh, they developed uh, Bazooka Joe mini-comics drawn by Wesley Morse. There were trading cards and other project, products. His uh, look changed with the times. By the 90s, he'd adopted a more contemporary look with low-slung, baggy jeans. From 1967 to 1990, the main writer was cartoonist Jay Lynch. So they go into all of this stuff, but they don't once uh, mention anything about bazooka joe like his backstory i guess i'll have to investigate that uh yes bazooka joe comics uh bubble yum still sticks to your beard i can confirm this <laughs> the one thing anyway uh lloyd dancer said could have ordered eclipse x-ray hypnotizing specs through joe yeah he could and that Glow in the dark Frankenstein monster. Bubble yum. Yes. That was a game changer, bubble yum. The doctor said by the time I mean I had a kid that would bring a whole deck of them, a case or whatever it was, into school, and he was literally selling them for fifty, twenty-five cents a piece till the school found out about it. Put a stop to capitalism. The doctor says by the time it was actually chewable, the flavor was gone. Pretty much. Much better than Bubblicious. Um, Bubblicious stayed chewier longer, but the flavor was nowhere near as good. Uh, Lori Dancer said, stuck to Joe's or was one of its friends turtlenecks? Or, I don't know. Pink rubber. Juicy fruit was delicious, but flavor lasted two minutes. Yeah, you got that right. I remember when they came out with watermelon flavor, says Doc Torn. Doc Torn, here's to you. you you're a man after my own heart. Mm. Grape and watermelon flavor. Either Bub's Daddy or uh, Bubble Yum. Oh, my God. Joseph Art says, or Beatles, like the pink drinks and, drinks and Starbucks up to seven years ago. Yeah, Flamingos get pink from shrimp. All right. June Jesus says, when we were kids, we would chew on gobs of roofing tar. I guess we were weirdos. Well, if it, dude, it's not that far away from gum. Really, it's not. It's just a compound. Uh, Lori Dancer says, hippos have pink milk, but for a grosser reason. Uh, but how, do we, how, do we, how do we go down this dark alley? Was that Boom Boom Mancini for the the record record holder? No, he was the record holder for hitting Dooku Kim. 
Um, Jokerfish says, doop a doop a do. Hello, all. Hello there, Karen Garvey. So nice to see you here, as always. Aku says, I vaguely remember a tale from Nam that there was an error in supplies and a crate of gum was dropped. I can't remember the entire list, but I remember it was used to fix fuel lines. That's uh, probably not far from true. I like that tea berry gum, kind of winter greeny. Okay, well, there, if we're going to get off into that, remember black, there was black cat tea berry. Uh, there was that licorice gum. Black cat was the licorice. Uh, and then there was something else berry uh i forget what else it was and then there was one other in the there was it was like a little off brand of gums it was really good they were all really good um rep wild bill says yes sir the dog food killed uncle jake big league chew yeah big league chew big league chew was good it was really good i just didn't understand the ordering process uh, people saying, I mix it with Levi Garrett, I guess. And it's Indian Day. Um, or Red Man. Is that Levi Garrett and Big League Chew? I, I think a lot of big leaders, because uh, Major League Baseball players used to chew all that tobacco and they would chew leaf tobacco and um, wrap it in big bubble gum. And a lot of times that bubble gum was Big League Chew. Why no tobacco flavored big league chew? Good question. This is a darn good question. They cut out the middleman. Uh, just this year, no more fruity zebra. I like the zebra. Uh, so you do remember fruit stripes gum. Uh, the, D the, the DDLD, it's the bomb for about two minutes and the flavor's gone and you're craving and you're chewing caulk. Uh, caulking. Uh, Louis Malik, Lucas, excuse me, Malago says it was a six foot of bubble tape kid. I was six, now I'm a blackjack adult. Blackjack's a good gum. Um, so is Black Cat. Uh, the doctor says, I remember seeing tubs of super bubble gum at every convenience store as a kid. Yeah, super bubble was a low end. It, you know, if you, if you could get, what do we used to get? It was like, Did we, dude, I get three pieces of Bazooka Joe for a nickel, but I could get like five or six pieces of Super Bubble. It was, let's see here, Clove Gum. Oh yeah, that Clove Gum. Yeah, that was part of that little off-brand. Different category, but I'm shocked I can still buy Juicy Fruit and Big Red. No, it, it's not that different of a category. And yeah, those have been around forever. Forever. My grandmother always had juicy fruit gum she always had it whenever you'd see her you she'd just have it sticks of it giving it out i mean she always had it and she also chewed a little big red but mostly um you know wrigley spearmint you know what about blackjack blackjack was good Licorice gum. Uh, the DDLD says in the 80s there was checkerboard bubble yum or hubba bubba that maxed our checkerboard vans. Yeah, they did all sorts of stuff with those gums. All sorts of cool stuff. Toby McGrory says half my paper out money went to candy. Bubble tape came in a circular spool like a tape measure. I remember it, yes. And Toby McGroby, I'm with you. I'd say about half of my paper out money went to candy for the first few years anyway. Um, then I started buying, I, like, I can buy electronics with this, okay. But man, I'd go in, I'd get about four O. Henry bars, because I was crazy for those. I'd get at least four bricks of now and laters, uh, a couple ropes of Bub's Daddy, you know, uh, have to get a couple packages of Ho-Ho's, Right? And then maybe like a six pack of Welch's grape soda. And what else would I get? Uh, what were those? I'd get a couple uh, Butterfingers too. Yeah, at least. You know, and I would have spent $2.17 for all that stuff. <laughs> 
Lori Dancer says, pink cigars for blue girl, blue for a boy. Pre-gender reveal. Those were the days. Yeah. Or what? remember those uh, little packs of actual cigarettes that you could get? They weren't gum. They were like uh, real hard, chalky candy. And they were coated in sugar. So when you first got them, they were wrapped in paper. You could blow on them and make it look like you were smoking. Oh, I'd get a couple pixie sticks too. A couple meaning 10. Uh, in middle school, the candy store charged two cents for bazooka, but one cents for the tooth breaker no-name pieces. Yeah. Well, at the school store, I used to get, uh, what were those things? They were, they were almost like milk dugs, but they were apple flavored. Doggone it. They're apple something. Ugh. Can't remember. I'd also get the um, Pepperidge Farm, no, Dolly Madison oatmeal cookies that had like raspberry on the inside of them. I like those. Uh, Julian Zeter says, Did the spider egg gum taste like an omelet? <laughs> no, not that I'm. Hey, is Wild Bill here? Because I'm wearing his shirt right now. It's no the shirt he sent me, the No Lives Matter shirt. I was gonna try and impress him for once. Joker Fish says, What chemical reaction happens when saliva mixes with bubblegum chemicals? And what happens to the atoms and molecular structure when teeth disrupt the shape of said bubblegum? Okay, so um, the chemical reaction depends largely upon the type of flavor, because the particular flavor and where it lands on one of the four different flavor receptors on the tongue will determine the amount of saliva that it creates. And of course, that would greatly affect the chemical reaction. The atoms and molecular structure when the teeth disrupt stay exactly the same. There's no changes to those. It's, it's the structural characteristics of the actual piece of gum that change due to sheer rate, sheer strength, and sheer what's the rate, what's the strength, the amount, and then there's the strain, sheer strain. There we go. Um, Terry Nee says, I have a pail of double bubble. I used to kill crown dogs. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if I should tell this story or not. Do I think I'll ever have a chance to tell a story related to killing groundhogs? Thanks to my good friend, Terry Nee. I don't. Let's just say I am aware of an individual who... In order to do himself... Not well. It took some uh, groundhog poison. Did not end up well. Uh, let's see here, Joseph. And no explanation for his lost eye. No, I, I, maybe the guys from Double Bubble tried to kill him. I don't know. Uh, the doctor says another history lesson. Well, professor, got the well. Thank you. I, I hope. I hope it's something you're interested in. Pegleg Vet says yes, they are. Okay. Diana Bryan says, did you have Anglo bubblegum in two in America, Tom? No, we did not have Anglo. We have nothing called Anglo bubblegum. No. I'm fascinated, by the way, with British candy. Maybe we should just do a whole show on British candy at some point because they have kind of the same things that we have with different names, which is interesting. But then they also have some stuff we don't have. Peg Leg Vet says, I buy a Bazooka Joe often and always get a comic individually wrapped. Well, then they're using them again. Gator gum. Never heard of gator gum. No given explanation. No, it's a mystery. I'll, I'll look into it, but did chiclets make the list? Not in the top five. They didn't actually even make the top ten. And part of the reason is chiclets were out you know, relatively soon for chewing gum, but they were made from chickle not from a synthetic. So they were, you had to work a piece of uh, chiclets, at least when I was a kid. That was the other gum my grandmother always had. She always had chiclets. Always, always, always. 
Uh, Joseph Savard says, unlike other comics, there was no origin, no explanation how he lost his eye. I think it's, I think it's nice that they let us make up our own stories. <laughs> Uncle Jack says, I hand away, hey, hey, whoa, look out, hey now, whoa, that's, uh, yeah, uh, they can get them at, for free at school. Uh, Jokerfish says, Joe lost his eye in a Red Ryder BB gun accident. Put your eye out, kid. I do miss those comics, though. Yeah, I, I miss them, too. They're like the jokes in the back of Boys Life magazine. They're terrible, but you still miss them. Terry Nee says, Bazooka officials insist Joe has 20-20 vision and only wears the eye patch to give himself a distinctive look or an advantage over an opponent. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm cracking myself up today for some reason. Joe says, Wow, Bill, I loved orange gator gum. Was gator? Oh, yeah, Gatorade gum. Yes, gator gum. Oh, man, you want to talk about salivating. That was a tart. And what was that other sport gum that they had? Quench. Quench gum. And we all took it because we thought it was going to make us be able to slam dunk when we were in fifth grade. But you... Oh, I mean, my face contorts just thinking about taking a piece. It's like putting your tongue on a battery. Uh, Julian Caesar says an unopened baseball card packs with gum in them are much rarer than the ones that didn't come with gum. I wonder. I wonder, too. I found out my treasured baseball collection ain't worth nothing. Well, I can't say that. I do have quite a few cards that are worth some considerable money, but when you have 5,000 cards... You feel like, well, this has got to be worth six or seven thousand dollars. No, 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 not if they're that even from the seventies. There's certain cards that are worth, you know, good money, but there's a lot of cards that just aren't worth that much. Uh, Red Wild Bill says, Bazooka Joe has 2020 video. Oh, I already did that one. Uh, Morticia made additions to her web on Tuesday, the day after. Morticia is uh, Wild Bill's attack tarantula. Big League Chew Grape. I've had that. It's that's some good stuff. Big League Chew is always juicy. It was juicy gum. Um, Aku Mugen says, I remember an ad in an ancient comic for a product you would put at the end of a cigarette as a prank and it would make snow. No argument, I'm crazy. But anyone else see that? I didn't see that, but I remember there were joy buzz buzzers and, uh, you know, what was the... There's a certain kind of gum that was... Oh, the ink gum that would make your teeth all inky. Uh, they have a lot of wacky practical jokes. Fool your friends. Uh, Julian Caesar says, Frigate birds, puffer fish, bullfrogs, bubblegum chewers, all kindred spirits. Yeah, the puffy-cheeked... Uh, yes. Joker fish, you'll put your eye out. Eleven. This is a more cheerful chat room. Uh, Hugh says, my grandma always had fruit stripes gum. Still hate gum to this day. Oh, man, I'm sorry to hear that. I quit chewing it. You know what? I quit? This is a really sort of spiteful, not great reason to quit chewing it. Uh, I bit my tongue really bad one time when I was chewing it. My fault, of course. And I just went, I'm done with this. I'm done. If I'm hurting myself, a mallow. Oh, mallow cups. Oh, peg leg vet. You just brought back a memory. I, I haven't thought about mallow cups in ages. I want one now. The DDLD says Jolly Rancher sticks were a must back then. These whippersnappers today only know about the little cubes, but the sticks were where it's at. You're right about that, DDLD. Those Jolly Rancher sticks. And what were the other things that were like that kind of candy that had chocolate? There was a little coating of chocolate at the top, like halfway, whatever. It was pretty good. Popeye's candy cigs. Yeah. Grape knee high. Oh, the grape knee highs. Grape knee high was hard to find in our area. It was hard to find. But Welch's grape soda and what was the one, the better orange? It wasn't Welch's orange. It was sun-kissed orange soda. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Now I want that stuff. It's okay. I got root beer here. Seen bubblegum machine balls were mostly hollow. Seemed a letdown. Remember the Mickey Mouse gumball machine? Got another gumball. Kid was clean with his... Yeah. 
I remember that. I do remember that, Lori. And uh, remember that there would always be like at the mall or the arcade or the grocery store. There was that. There was that um, machine, gumball machine, that had a giant dome. And the gumballs were the size of a golf ball, at least, if not bigger. And like Lori says, they were hollow, but it was still a lot of gum. But when you put the quarter in, turn the thing, it came down like a ramp that went all around the outside of it to the place where you got it. Uh, thank you, Mickey. I do remember that. Sad that I remember that. Jolly Rancher Fire Sticks, Green Apple, or Watermelon Sticks. These were must-haves to buy at Campwood's Corner Store to have at the bus stop in the morning all the way into school. We we had a babysitter that would bribe us with them uh, to be good. Let's see. Aku Mugen said, The biggest difference between European candy and ours, Tom, is corn syrup over sugar. That's why we can't find those red strawberry wrapper candies. I gotcha. The, the red strawberry wrapper candies that when you bit into them had this, this the gooey stuff on the inside of them. Man, those were awesome. Uh, Peg Lake Vets says, have we ever done a show about the Altamont concert in 69? Nope, but I need to. Good suggestion, PLB. Uh, that is a prime one. I think tomorrow is going to be about, uh, we're going to have another assassination show. I haven't picked out who yet, but we're going to have one. Uh, let's see here. Do you know what the ladies of the evening chew? Dentine, I'll think that's probably what that meant. Juicy goobs. Oh, hey, hey, whoa, look out. That's a, yeah, yeah come on. Not in front of the guys. I quit chewing gum when I was old enough to put a wad of chaw in my mouth. That's not true. Well, I used to dip skull. Well, I started off with mild happy days when I was very much too young to be doing that. But it was good. I liked it. So anyway, that, ladies and gentlemen, it's kind of the story of bubblegum. Um, let's see here. We used to get lick on tattoos, but the ice cream man put acid on them. It was the 70s. No big deal. That dude keeps coming around here at like 8 o'clock at night. Now, well, I'm happy he's not doing it during the show anymore. But 8 o'clock is still way too late for that. Um, freshen up gum was the worst. Was that the, what was the gum that had the little gel or whatever in the inside? When you bit down, it would squirt out. I forget. Maybe that was freshen up. I don't know. Uh, fre I don't. I remember freshen up the name, but I don't remember the gum. Uh, the show will stick. <laughs> uh, the ice cream man sells drugs. No, he didn't sell drugs. Trust me. Mm. In our neighborhood, he didn't seem to sell anything. I've never seen him stopped, ever, not once. I don't know what he comes through here for. Maybe he just watches the show. I don't know. <laughs> Figures he'll drop by and just... Uh, hey, want to thank Ronald Bateman for his generosity. Thank you so much for the super chat, Ronald. That was very, very kind of you. Uh, the ice cream man in New Jersey did. Well, I'm not doubting you there. I wouldn't doubt you there. Far be it for me to ever say that the ice cream man in New Jersey doesn't sell drugs. I still got some more work to do on this. I, I, unfortunately, I took a nap right before the show and messed up my hair, so I don't really know what I'm going to do to it. Uh, Julian Jesus says, I can hear Mr. Softy up in the next block, even with my earbuds in. Yeah, Ronald Bateman says, you're welcome, sir. Thank you. I appreciate it. I do appreciate it. Um, the three-letter agencies are spying on you, ice cream man. <laughs> well, they're not, they're not uh, blessed with a very high threshold of entertainment or information because there ain't nothing going on here. Absolutely nothing going on here at all. Nothing to write home about, that's for sure. Nothing going on, nothing. Uh, a 
it was a super fun show. Super fun. But I'm going to do a show on Altamont. Thank you, Peg Leg Vet. And I'm, I'm teetering between... I can tell you guys. You won't tell anybody. Uh, the assassination of Rutherford B. Hayes or... One of the assassination attempt. Well, maybe I'll do all the assassination attempts on uh, Andrew Jackson. They're kind of amazing. Or maybe I should just do a show on failed assassination attempts. Because there's been many of those. Um, Karen Garvey says, my husband has stories about the ice cream man in Street Jersey. God, I, I didn't realize this was a thing. I, I grew up on a small farm in Indiana. Uh, thank you, Tom. Super fun show. Thank you, Chad. Uh, Peggy Lee Vets, so your show shows a palate cleanser before getting pulled back into the devil verse. <laughs> thank you. Well, I try uh, to clean as many palates as I can. Aku says, never tried chew, but I had to start using the Canadian version of Zin called Zonic to keep myself going on the Mac truck. Yeah. I don't really know what that is, but your hair is perfect. No, it's kind of messed up over here. I, 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 like I said, I slept on it before I got did the show. Uh, Reverend Wild Bill says, I like pinwheels over mallow cups. They're both good. Hayes, says Lyndon. Uh, Reverend says, orange crush in the brown bottle. That's the one I was thinking of there, Rev, was uh, orange crush. Ooh, boy, was some good stuff. Was some good stuff. And I, you know... I I occasionally get a sprite, kind of, just to change it up a little. Just to change it up a little. If I didn't like somebody, I'd get them a fresca. But the weird thing about that was when I was, because I used to hate fresca. When I was, uh, oh gosh, this was probably the mid '90s. I I had a lot of. Uh, friends that worked in radio sales and they would always do these promotions and one time this girl I knew says hey can, can I come by your place I got a whole bunch of soda here and we didn't give any of it away and if you want it you can have it and I went soda yeah count me in and uh, she came over and she had literally like 12 cases of Fresca and they probably just sat there for a month right and then one day I said, I'm, I'm going to put some of these in the fridge and just try one once in a while. And it was during a really hot summer. And I'll just go ahead and say it. I, I learned to just really like Fresca <laughs> over that period of time. All right. We got a Rico coming up here in about a minute and a half. So I'm going to let you find people go. Thank you again, Ronald Bateman, for the kind donation. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for any likes, shares, subscribes, retweets, follows that you may have done. That just they help the show so much. And they cost so little. Uh, otherwise, you guys are the best. The only thing left to say really is have a great hump day. We here at Tom Gully Show. Hope you get the total fall complete amount. Hope you think you deserve enough. Blah, blah, blah. Till next time, we'll see you next time. Right out of my pants Don't you know